air particles are red, water particles are blue. This is before putting on the heat. We have air inside and on outside and uh, liquid water at the bottom. We're now going to put on the heat. And as the water heats up, the water becomes vapor and its direction is all over the place. But there is a net direction of gaseous water since it's all coming from the same source at the bottom of the flask, which means as the gas is evolving, it has a net direction of going up. That is important because that means it's going to be constantly colliding with air particles. And as it collides with those air particles, because it has a net upward direction, the collision results in pushing out the air particles. In other words, the net direction of the air particles from those collisions is up. So the air particles go out of the flask as the water vapor particles collide with them. Water continuously becomes vapor due to boiling, pushing out air particles more and more. Eventually, most air particles get pushed out by the water vapor moving upward, leaving water as the primary gas in the flask. And it would be difficult to get rid of all of the air. We can assume that there is some air in there. And this was shown in the video, actually, by the fact that the balloon did not get inflated all the way into the flask. If you go and look at the video, the balloon uh, stopped some a couple of centimeters from the bottom of the flask, and that's because of the air that was left in there. So now the balloon is put on. We wait to put on the balloon until enough time has passed where we can assume most of the air is out of the flask, and then, then we put on the balloon. The balloon now seals the flask. Once the heat is removed, any hot uh, water vapor will fill the balloon and inflate it for a little bit. So that's the inflating with uh, water vapor particles. But on the outside of the balloon, there are constantly air particles hitting and putting a force on the outside of the balloon. So air particles hitting the balloon, water begins to cool. So there's less water inside the balloon. As the water cools, it's going to start condensing. And air particles continue to collide with and push on balloon up here. Water particles in flask cool, condense, and reduce collisions inside balloon. Air particles continue to collide with and push in balloon. Water particles in flask cool, condense, and reduce collisions with balloon inside of flask. Less and less collisions up here on the balloon. More and more collisions with uh, air and the inside of the balloon. Well, it used to be the outside of the balloon. It's now the inside of the balloon. And that just continues. Air particles continue to collide with and push and balloon. The opposing force provided by the water vapor rapidly reduces as water particles cool, slow down, and condense. So as the water vapor particles slowly cool, the inside and outside pressure remain virtually equal. And so as the pressure on the inside decreases, the balloon will expand to meet that lowering inside pressure. And so that expands the balloon, and that just keeps happening. And then here I've left a little air to show that the balloon does not go all the way down to the bottom because of whatever air is left that was originally inside the flask. So here's the balloon in the flask. Question, why is it important to remove the air particles from the flask before putting on the balloon?